Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Monday. We're trusting that your day is going well. Hopefully your week is off to a wonderful start. And uh, thank you for spending a few moments together as we look at a verse of the Bible and uh, share a few thoughts uh, for devotion today. And uh, our today's devotion is going to be found in John chapter number 15. And uh, Jesus is speaking in chapter number 15, The majority, basically all of chapter number 15. It is the words of Christ. And uh, Jesus is teaching on this thought of him being the vine and uh, the true vine and how we, uh, every branch is connected to him and, and uh, we can't bear fruit unless we're connected to the true vine. And then he makes a statement in verse number four uh, that I'm interested in sharing a few thoughts with you today. And he talks about this abiding. He talks about abiding in him. There's what verse four says of John chapter 15. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. And so this thought of abiding in uh, in Christ is really the predominant uh, theme or thought in the first part of John chapter number 15. And there's a few things that come to my mind when you talk about abiding in Christ. What does it mean, as he said, uh, abide in me as I abide in you. What does it mean to abide in Christ? Well, first of all, to abide in Christ, uh, there has to be a conversion that took place. In other words, it's impossible to abide in Christ unless a person has trusted Christ as their Savior, that they're part of the family of God, that they've been born again, that they've been saved, that they've been converted, all these different terms that means the same thing, that they've been uh, made a child of God through their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's impossible for a person to abide in Christ unless they have been converted, unless they have trusted Christ as their Savior, unless they've been saved. The second thing that comes to my mind about this abiding in Christ is uh, the communion that comes along with that. Abiding in Christ, communion. Uh, and certainly that's been made available to us when we get saved. The Bible talks about Jesus being the mediator between God and man. Uh, communion with him. Uh, to the world, uh, a person that's saved or a person that goes to church is just trying to obey some type of uh, outwardly uh, outward laws or, or rules, and uh, they're part of some type of religious movement. But we that know Christ as our Savior understand it's a relationship that we have uh, with the Lord, a relationship uh, that is, is something that you and I, uh, we hear Him speak to us through His Word, and uh, certainly He's given us the invitation and the encouragement uh, to call upon him in prayer, uh, that to come boldly into the throne of grace, uh, as the Bible uh, tells us and exhorts us to do, that we can come to him in prayer. And so this abiding in Christ has, has to do with communion, and certainly I think all of us are thankful for that, that we can call upon him at any time, any place, and he hears and answers our prayer. But also abiding in Christ has to has a, has a, an aspect of, of that term, of closeness, uh, being close with someone. And uh, to abide in Christ means close to Christ. If we abide in anything, uh, it means we're close uh, close to that. And uh, we, we should try to live our lives uh, close to the Lord. In fact, he tells us this, uh, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. And so we are as close to God as we want to be. Uh, and so this abiding in Christ has the aspect of being converted. You have to be saved. This communion that comes along with abiding in Christ, this closeness that comes along with abiding in Christ. And then uh, I thought of this, this third thought, consistency. To abide somewhere is it's not just a one-time thing, right? If you abide in your home, I abide, you know, I live in Winfield. I abide in Winfield. It's not just a uh, one-time thing. It's something that continues and uh, to abide in Christ is there's consistency, that there's a consistency aspect of that term abide. And certainly we should be consistent in our, in our walk for the Lord. And um, that, uh, that word that's trans translated abide here, it, it has a, a, a consistent aspect to it. it. It means to continue. It means to keep on abiding, not just abide one time, but to keep on abiding. And then there's a fourth one, and we'll close here. The fourth one, it talks about uh, uh, commands. If we're abiding, we're going to keep his commands. It's not a, this, uh, in, in fact, this, what we're looking here is really is a command. Notice what it says again. 
abide in me, that's a command. And uh, the command aspect of abide is not a suggestion, but it's really an order from the Lord Jesus Christ for believers to abide in him. And uh, we'll, when we abide in him, we'll conform, of course, to his word, conform to his way. And so uh, just a few thoughts about abiding in Christ today. Uh, one, you need to be converted. You, we, you and I do not abide in Christ unless we've first been saved. Um, and then there's a closeness aspect to that. There's a communion aspect to that. There's a command, a command given here, of course, but also we, when we are abiding, we're keeping his commands. And so let's abide in Christ today. Let's live for him. Let's live differently, as I talked about yesterday, last night uh, when uh, in the message. And uh, let's live differently for him today. Let's let our light shine. Let's abide in Christ and uh, let others know that Jesus Christ is the Lord of our lives. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday today. And uh, if you could... Like and share our video today. Let us uh, read, let, help us to reach other folks uh, with uh, these little devotions. And Lord willing, we'll be back with you tomorrow on Tuesday's edition uh, for lunchtime with Lord. Until then, let's abide in Christ. God bless you.